Hi, I'm Shauna. Today on Sewing with Schwinn, we are going to be tackling the basic t-shirt. I'm going to show you everything you need to know so that you can make a great basic tee. To get started, you're just going to need a basic tee pattern. I'm linking to lots of those options below, ranging from child sizes on up through women's sizes. So go ahead and pick your pattern and let's get started, shall we? Okay, we're going to start with the t-shirt pattern. Got a sleeve, all the basic components. I'm using the Hello T pattern. So I always trace my patterns off onto a tracing paper, usually freezer paper, because my kids always need blended sizes. So I print off one copy of the pattern, but then I always label any changes like the length here. I also edited the neckline of this because the Hello T is a V neck and I use the curved neck from the Hello Tank. So I'm also using the Hello Tank neck binding. Next, let's talk about stretch. When you're making a t-shirt, you're going to use a stretch fabric. First thing you should do is test the stretch percentage. So you're going to cut a 10 inch by two inch strip and place that down holding one end. You need it to stretch to 15 inches for 50% stretch, which most neck bindings require at least 50% stretch. So as you can see with this one, when I'm stretching it that far, it just starts to curl. So this has a 50% stretch. If I stretched it beyond that, it would curl way too much and I wouldn't like that. The other thing to test is how much it rebounds after it's being stretched. So this is almost the same size. Just for reference, I'm gonna show you on a ribbing, a knit rib. So uh, when I stretch this, you can see it stretches way beyond 50%. And so a net, most rib knits have you know, 90% or more stretch. They stretch so much. And they also bounce back fairly well. Um, so it's a good option. However, if you are going to use a knit ribbing in case or any fabric that has more stretch percentage than the pattern calls for, you might have to alter your neck binding piece to be shorter so that it does stretch enough when being sewn on to the neckline. And now for some binding do's and don'ts. Here are a couple do's. You do want your binding to look flat and smooth. You don't want wrinkles in your garments. You just want it to be a pretty curved edge. You don't want these wrinkles as shown in this blue one here, um, where there's wrinkles all along and in the red one where the band looks all wavy and loose. So in the top one, if you're getting wrinkles like this, it means that your band is not long enough for this knit fabric, so you will need to lengthen the band. And on the bottom one, if you're getting it loose like this, you need to shorten the band so that it stretches more when you're sewing it in place. Okay, moving on to cutting out our fabric. You wanna cut each of your pieces so that the most stretch goes along the stretch grain of the pattern. So side to side is how the bodices are going to be cut out and you cut your front and back bodice out on the fold. So meaning your fabric is folded in half and then you cut. And then the sleeve in this pattern is just cut out flat. So I'm just folding the fabric so I cut two at the same time. I'm also gonna cut my neck binding on the fold just because I find it easier. So I fold my neck binding piece in half. Okay, so we have all of our pieces that we need, two sleeves, front and back bodice and the neck binding. That's it, that's all you need for a t-shirt. So the first step is to sew is right sides together. You're going to sew the front and back pieces together at the shoulders. Okay, for sewing, you can use a regular sewing machine to sew your knits. I would just increase your stitch length slightly and then make it a narrow zigzag stitch. So you're just making it slight, like a one or two width in your zigzag stitch. Okay, for needles, sew with a stretch or jersey or ballpoint needle. And the other needle I'm gonna show you here is a twin needle, if I can get it out of the case, it's a struggle. And the twin needle has two needles sewn together. It's great for hems. Okay, so we're going to sew the shoulders and you can see with the zigzag, it really does still allow for the stretch. Okay, we sewed a seam, so we have our iron out. 
you are going to want to iron or press every single seam. I press my shoulder seams towards the back of the bodice. I don't know that there's really a right or wrong way here. I just like to press it towards the back. I think it looks the best. So give your shoulder seams a good press and you are going to press every single seam, you guys. I also press on the front side just to make sure that everything is in fact laying nice and flat as I want it to. Okay, then we're gonna open that shoulder seam flat and we're going to pin our sleeve in place. I start at one end on each, making sure I match up any marks. So I got the front of the sleeve at the front and then just pin the sleeve in place all the way around. It should not stretch at all. It should just fit perfectly in place. And then we're gonna sew all along this curve. And when you're sewing, make sure that you don't stretch your seam at all as you sew everything goes flat. Your seams will sometimes be a little wavy, but that's okay because we are going to give it another press. I use my ironing ham to press my sleeves because it is a curve. I press the seam allowance towards the bodice in that case. Now we are going to go ahead and sew on our next sleeve. Okay, now we're going to flip the shirt right side together or inside out, and we're gonna sew from the bottom edge up to the sleeve. And we're gonna go ahead and sew both sides. Okay, again, we sewed, so we press. We're gonna go ahead and press the side seams so they're nice and flat. And then we're going to fold up the hem of the bottom, and I fold it up by a half inch and then another half inch. And then we're also gonna fold the sleeves under and I do about a quarter inch and double turn on the sleeves as well. Okay, so now we're going to sew. I have my double needle in and the double needle, you just need to thread with two top threads. So I usually use a bobbin and a spool of thread for those and you just thread them both the same way into the double needle and it gives a nice double stitched stretch hem so you can just straight stitch here you don't need to do a zigzag straight stitch and you guessed it we sewed a line so we're going to iron a line we don't want any wavy hems here so give it a good press okay last step here we're going to be sewing our neck band in place so first thing we're going to do is fold it in half and we're going to sew these two ends together Okay, once they're sewn together, we're going to be folding our band in half. I use the seam as my center back for the neck band. And so I'm just gonna fold the band in half and find the center front then, and then match up those two points and find the other quarters so that we're marking this every quarter of the way. So we have four marks in this. We're also gonna do the same to the neck line of the shirt. So I fold it in half so I can find my center front and center back, which is also the lines that were cut on the fold. And then I match up those points and match along the neckline until I find the quarter points for the neckline. It should be noted, it is almost never the shoulder seam because the back neckline is not as long as the front neckline. Now we're gonna take our neck band and we're just gonna match up those four points together on each. So starting with the center front and center back, I put mark my that place my neck band in place and then same with the quarter marks and doing this just makes it so that it's really easy to sew and stretch evenly between the points okay so now as we sew our neck band we are going to stretch the neck band only not the neckline between the two points as we sew so just continue sewing all the way around in the round stretching the neck band as you go Okay, and once again, give it a good press. And then you can top stitch your neckband if you desire. Okay guys, we did it. You sewed a basic tee. Now that you are comfortable with sewing a t-shirt pattern, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you can follow along on these six different hacks that I'm going to be doing to this pattern, to this basic t-shirt pattern. Now that we've gotten comfortable, let's cut it up and sew it back together. It's fun. Uh, so follow along and those will be coming up in the coming weeks. Okay. Bye